Has Germany increased its gold reserves for the first time in 21 years? This is the question that we cover and we look at in today's video market update. Hi, I'm Marco Byrne, the Research Director of Goldcore.com, and in today's video update, we're looking at one of the more important stories in the gold market in the last week, and arguably in recent months. Uh, it's a, a huge story that broke last Wednesday, uh, and we covered it in our daily market update, uh, and basically the story was on the Bloomberg terminal uh, reporting how Germany had increased its gold reserves for the first time in 21 years. So the Bloomberg terminal, and only the Bloomberg terminal, it wasn't reported anywhere else reports that Germany had added to its gold reserves and the German gold reserves had climbed to 108.34 million ounces, so 108.34 million ounces in September and that this was the first increase since 1998. So we and, and, and many obviously in, in the gold market thought that this was a, a huge story and very important story and we we're quite surprised that it didn't get more traction than it did and didn't get picked up uh, on Bloomberg itself, besides the terminal on Bloomberg.com, on the websites, and indeed on other mainstream financial publications. So uh, we're going to look at it anyway, and just look at the facts of exactly what was reported, uh, and then subsequently, uh, an unusual uh, uh, how the story has evolved. Uh, and only yesterday, a development in this regard that hasn't been picked up uh, in the in the in the blogosphere, or in the in the gold uh, market, and in the gold industry. Even uh, I think many people are unaware of the the recent development in how this story ha has evolved. So I'm going to share my screen with you here and show you the original story from our friends in Bloomberg. And you can see here, so Germany increases gold reserves in September for first time in 21 years. So this is a screen grab uh, of the original story uh, saying how Turkey and Germany had added to the gold reserves in September. So really big story, particularly at a time when Mario Draghi is retiring from the European Central Bank, Christine Lagarde, who is quite left-leaning and, and known to be quite favorably disposed to uh, electronically creating billions and billions of euros, which does not bode well for the, the euro as a store of value in the coming months and years. Um, so very sensitive time for, for Germany to be buying gold reserves uh, after 21 years, you know, uh, and hence why we thought it was a very important story, uh, especially given the wider context of how central banks around the world, there is actually a bit of a, the term gold rush is abused frequently in the gold market and just, you know, stories of how retail investors are rushing to buy gold, there's a gold rush amongst retail investors and, and that has not happened, it happened briefly probably in 2011 at the height of the financial crisis, but there's been little or no gold rush uh, in recent years, uh, but there is a bit of a gold rush in, in regards to central banks buying gold at the moment, uh, it's, it's huge, they're the biggest buyers of the gold market uh, and, and uh, they were uh, uh, in 2018, they will be in 2019, uh, and it's very significant uh, demand uh, in terms of the, the tonnage that they're buying is huge. The, the amount in terms of dollar terms vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis their overall foreign exchange reserves and the dollar reserves is actually not that much just yet, but in tonnage terms it's huge given the very small size of the above ground investment grade uh, gold bar and the gold coin marketplace. So any uh, movement into gold by large central banks uh, is very, very supportive of gold prices given the supply demand equation in, 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 in the in the fiscal gold market and obviously the biggest uh, holders of uh, US treasuries and US dollars are the Chinese and the People's Bank of China is buying gold again in, in the last few months uh, as is the Russian Central Bank something like 16 central banks internationally, big central banks with large dollar reserves are buying gold. So the German story, in addition to this, we thought was very important and very bullish indeed, you know. So uh, we covered the story again on, uh, on Thursday uh, and how, you know, it's also the context of Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank's uh, 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 earnings came out, uh, I think today, and uh, it was quite poor. And, and there are very significant concerns about Deutsche Bank, the biggest bank in Europe, you know, and if Deutsche Bank goes down, it will create contagion in not just the German banking system, but the European and indeed the, the global banking system, you know, uh, and there are concerns about the euro. 
And indeed, the dollar, we have Trump uh, in the White House, and he's been tweeting in recent days about how the Federal Reserve are incompetent and buffoons and dangerous. And, uh, you know, this is the President of the United States of America uh, uh, attacking the Federal Reserve, the people who are tasked with uh, protecting the, the value of the dollar um, and, and, and the U.S. economy, you know. So uh, it's it's very, very bullshit indeed. So the, 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 this is the story that we covered the following day, and it shows, you know, that you see the German gold holdings here. Uh, you know, they they were selling uh, in, in 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 the last twenty years. You know, uh, and then it looked like they had bought, uh, according to IMF data. Uh, and then you can see here, this is from Zero Hedge, um, who got the data from the Bloomberg via the IMF, and you can see the German gold holdings decreasing since the year two thousand, uh, and then the increase there at the bottom. You know, so it's interesting and important. Um, so, but the story then changed, uh, and 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 basically, the Bundesbank gold buying it was questioned initially by Jasper Crawley, who's the director of institutional investment in the World Gold Council, and he tweeted uh, basically saying that uh, the IMF database, which triggered the, the Bloomberg story in the first place, had been am amended, and it actually sh now showed no change. And uh, he had a screen grab of that. Uh, unfortunately, the screen uh, grab is not very good in terms of resolution, so it's so hard to actually make out what that is, uh, given the very poor resolution of, of the uh, the screen grab. Um, so, but that was the first sort of you know people were 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 were, were uh, first yeah uh, question of the uh, initial Bloomberg story. Uh, a few people have sort of uh, replied to that, saying that they can't read it and uh, and uh, put some ice on that. Uh, but people were, yeah, the resolution was was uh, was was not sufficient to view it. Uh, so, Annie, anyway, the story was left out there. There was no uh, further coverage of it in in the mainstream media, which I, I thought was a bit unusual. I think many people in our industry thought it was a bit surprising that there wasn't follow-up stories, sort of, you know, a bit of journalism uh, to to actually establish the facts of what was what what had happened. Um, but now, yesterday. It's interesting. Bloomberg corrected the original story, and it's a, a, a guy called Willem Middelkoop, who is a very respected uh, international uh, commodity uh, fund manager uh, out of Amsterdam and and the Netherlands. He's a, a reputable guy, a good guy, who is uh, yeah, he's actually a highly respected author as well. And I met Willem at a conference I think some ten years ago. A very good guy who knows his stuff. And he basically tweeted there saying that uh, there's a correction from Bloomberg uh, just yesterday and Germany didn't buy more gold after all. Uh, the, 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 the headline there, you can see it, correct, Turkey adds to gold reserves, Germany unchanged IMF. So, so it leads to so many questions. The question is, you know, did the IMF get the data wrong in the first place? Uh, did the Bundesbank tell the IMF the, uh, the wrong data um, uh, and the IMF got the data wrong? Or was the IMF data correct in the first place and the Bloomberg article correct? Um, uh, and possibly there are sensitivities about this story, uh, one would imagine, uh, and, and maybe the IMF decided to revise the data to, to unchange. Who knows? We don't know. And it, it's all speculation. And, and, and because of the the, the, so it's a very poor coercion story. It just uh, leads to more questions and answers, shall we say, you know. Um, so, but the bottom line is, I think more importantly, is whether the IMF got the data wrong um, or that Bloomberg got the, the story wrong. So, well, I don't think Bloomberg did get the story wrong. I think Bloomberg accurately reports what the IMF have told them, you know. So uh, it's just the IMF. Uh, got the data wrong in the first place or didn't get the data wrong one or the other uh, so answers on a postcard please uh, but, but better still probably a good idea for journalists and the public actually to go to the Bundesbank themselves and, and ask them uh, you know because Bundes, the Bundesbank and all central banks these days are all about transparency and openness and all the rest and the Bundesbank is uh, they're, 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 uh, yeah there uh, there you go you can you can Follow them on on uh, on YouTube and on Twitter. Their Twitter handle is there at Bundesbank, and I'm sure if you sent them a few tweets asking them uh, exactly did you increase the gold reserves or not, you should get an answer there and uh, 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 from them. And you can actually contact them on their website. Uh, that's their website there. Uh, you can send them an email and ask them the questions there. And they are all about transparency. Uh, Carl Ludwig Thiel, who's a member of the executive board of the Bundesbank, uh, wrote an article there for the World Gold Council in December talking all about the importance of transparency regarding the gold reserves. So 
it's important that there is transparency and we don't have doubts about these matters. So uh, let's let's uh, let's ask the questions uh, of the the Bundesbank um, and 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 establish uh, exactly what the facts are. It's actually interesting, and in the course of just doing a bit of research for for this this video update, I see that there's a, a new book out by uh, Carl Ludwig Thiel uh, called Germany's Gold, which sounds like a fascinating book. It's all about the history of, of the German gold reserves, you know, and you can actually access that on the Deutsche Bundesbank website. Uh, and uh, I might buy it myself. It sounds very interesting. They 2990 to buy that book, uh, Germany's Gold. And the Germans, it's interesting, the Germans get gold, uh, and that's why it's important, sorry, that Germany is still one of the biggest economies in the world, and, and they are a large creditor nation, and therefore, if they started buying gold it would be very very important indeed because that would be the largest there are western central banks who have bought gold including the hungarians and and, and the polish central bank but this would be the largest western central bank to have bought gold you know and I, I think it's only a matter of time before they do buy gold to tell you the truth um because i think they are worried about sharing currency with the italians and the spanish and the greeks and indeed uh, uh, the irish you know so as i said the more, more important story here is uh, is actually about uh, why central banks are buying gold and why the German Bundesbank may indeed and probably will buy gold. And, and that is because of the, the risks, uh, you know, very significant in the world today. Just today, uh, Ray Dalio, the biggest hedge fund manager in the world, you know, basically warning about the global economy and how vulnerable it is and what a scary situation we are in in terms of slowing economic growth and meanwhile, ineffective central policy because the central bankers have shot their load in effect and they have just already printed trillions and trillions they have interest rates near zero and they do not have uh, the firepower that they have had going into previous uh, financial uh, slowdowns or indeed financial crisis you know so uh the yeah the the, the but we've covered this quite a bit and it's, it's slowly going into mainstream but the interbank lending market in in the in, in the us is just the, the U.S. Uh, Federal Reserve is pumping in billions uh, every single day now. Overnight, it's going in there, you know, and, and the Federal Reserve balance sheet is 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 being destroyed in a very short period of time, you know. So, uh, and we have the IMF warning: the world's financial system is more stressful, stable, and dangerous than it was on the on the eve of the Lehman crisis. So, the the risks are building up there, as we know, and that's why central banks are buying gold. And very interesting, the Dutch central bank, uh, uh, another uh, prominent and powerful central bank in the European monetary system, the euro system. Uh, uh, they they covered uh, a, a very important thing. It's on their website. Uh, they basically uh, put this up on the website, saying how gold is the perfect big piggy bank, and if the system collapses, the gold stock can serve as a basis to build it up again. So uh, yeah, the mood music around gold is changing fundamentally because of these growing uh, macroeconomic, systemic, geopolitical risks and indeed monetary risks. So uh, as we said here, the, the you know if only the the central bank of Ireland and indeed the Bank of England, where the majority of our clients are in the UK and in the United Ireland, and, and we wish that our central banks were as prudent and far-sighted as the Dutch central bank and indeed the the German central bank, who have repatriated all their gold from London and indeed from New York in recent years because they realized that the importance of holding gold uh, in their own country. So if only the, uh, the the central banks of Ireland and indeed the Bank of England were as prudent because um, uh, they should be buying gold uh, and they should be having those conversations and the media should be having these conversations and saying, why haven't you bought gold? Or, where are our gold reserves? How much do we have? Where is it stored? How safe is it stored? And should we be buying more given the, the, the backdrop that we have today, uh, the very uncertain backdrop we have today? And the short answer is yes, we should. Should, of course we should you know but it's just a taboo unfortunately uh, because there's such a, a lack of information and a lack of knowledge and a lack of um, basic facts uh, about gold are not known uh, by the majority of the public including many so-called financial and economic experts you know so that's it. So yeah, talk to your talk to your politicians, talk to your central bankers, ask them questions, and encourage them to uh, yeah, just to 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 to, to buy gold, uh, to diversify into gold, to protect uh, our currencies against these these growing risks because they are very real risks, and we do believe, as we have been consistently saying for a period of time, we are on the verge of another financial and indeed monetary crisis where where gold will come into its own and will again protect people from these risks. So yeah. Thanks again for your time. I hope you found the, the video update today of value. Uh, and you can follow us on all the usual uh, social media channels. And you can sign up to our market update on uh, news.goldcore.com. Um, and yeah, take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.